On this episode, we talk about GM's all new, all electric car, the Chevy Bolt, next on Talking Cars. Hi everybody, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Michelle Naranjo. And I'm Jake Fisher. Let's say you wanted an all electric car with over 200 miles of range, but you just don't have Tesla money. What do you do? What do you do? Well, now there's an answer. And from all people, it comes from Chevrolet. We have with us the Chevrolet Bolt with a B. It's quite an accomplishment, isn't it? Um, sure. I mean, before now, uh, 200 miles range, we were talking about Teslas, right? And in terms of affordable price, a lot of people talk about the Tesla Model 3, which hopefully will come out in someday. about a year. Yeah, um, but certainly it has um, a lot of people excited about it. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people that put deposits on that right now. Um, but this car is actually here in mm -hmm. real life, uh, the Chevrolet Bolt, and um, looks like a real 200 mile plus uh, electric car for sure. Right. Now, Michelle, we have you on the program today because among all of us, you actually own an electric car. What do you have? I do. I have a 2015 uh, Chevrolet Sparks. It's the previous generation. They didn't update it for 2016 because they knew that this one was coming. Mm -hmm. um, the 2016 Spark that's not an EV did get updated. And it's an 85 mile range car. Mm -hmm. So you're used to living with 85 miles. Right. Uh, 200 miles is a big change, though, in what you can do it with the car. It opens up the world. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit further. <laughs> That's a lot further, it sounds like. It's like Magellan. Now you can go across right. to distant oceans. I mean, 200 miles, though, is, you know, that gets people through a lot of commuting time. <clears throat> well, sure. I mean, the, we've, we've tested electric cars here before. So we've done many of them, and a lot of them are very limited uh, range and limited appeal because they're less than 100 miles. Um, I mean, when we did our, when we tested our Nissan Leaf, you know, I mean, geez, it's about 25, 30 miles for me to go home from here. And, you know, I kind of get the sweats getting back mm -hmm. to work and hoping, hopefully I'm going to make it. So when we got our first Tesla, back in uh, 2012, it kind of changed the world, right? We're mm -hmm. like, oh, I could take an electric car home for the weekend. Wow, I could go and use it and not be really concerned if I have to go out of my way. Right, because right now the market used to be, you'd have a whole bunch of these um, sort of compliance cars, cars that automakers had to develop so that they could continue selling internal combustion engine cars in California. So you had a bunch of, you know, Fiat 500Es and Ford Focus electrics, you know, that were good for 80-ish miles. The Leaf, the latest versions of that are good for 107. And now we've, you know, now we've, there's this jump to 200. Right, so if you have these vehicles that can only go 100 miles or so, I mean, they aren't vehicles that really can replace your normal vehicle a lot of times. Well, I, I don't know, I mean, let's ask Michelle. I mean, how did you live with your, your Spark? Well, I, I'm, for me, before I had my Spark, my little BMW never got out of second gear if I wasn't getting on the freeway. Mm -hmm. I was just driving around down, downtown urban Long Beach. Um, and so when I got the electric car, I very rarely took it on the freeway. It was really just to go buy you know, groceries and run, run small errands, and, and it didn't really bother me. The thing that was amazing driving the Bolt was that it, the regenerative system seems to be a lot more effective. So I drove the 15 miles home last night in it and actually gained range. <laughs> Perpetual. And I didn't, and I didn't wow. drive dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't hypermiling. So GM has secretly <laughs> put right. out the perpetual motion machine. You know, it's funny too, actually. GM uh, has changed physics and time. So, yes. so let's talk about that for a second because what this also has is a feature that we've never seen before, which is there is on the steering wheel, you could pull the back of the steering wheel, there's a little button, mm -hmm. and that is the electric brakes, basically. So you have a different controller to just put regen on. And I kind of had a very similar experience with, with this too. Like, wow, I'm barely using any range because I was able to drive home and back mm -hmm. without ever really touching the brakes at all and just engaging the regenerative uh, part of the car. So you, I mean, it'll come to a complete stop without touching the brake mm -hmm. pad, without actually uh, yeah, the, a pedal. Yeah, the Chevy Volt has the same paddle, but it doesn't work anywhere near as, you know, they've obviously spent more time working out all the algorithms with this. Mm -hmm. um, the Bolt is a new platform, you know, completely different. Um, the batteries are actually st structural, you know, they go up within the So, I mean, this is, this is when, when we first tested the Tesla, 
I mean, one of the things that we kind of really talked a lot about was this is the first time we saw a vehicle that was designed as an electric car mm -hmm. and optimized as such. This is the same animal here. This is not a Chevrolet Cruze, which they said, okay, we'll go shove the batteries in here and whatnot. I mean, this is a, the platform, the bottom of the car pretty much, much like the Tesla, is a battery pack. Mm -hmm. And they've optimized it for that. And I think as a whole, I mean, just driving it, it's much more impressive than vehicles that have been converted into yeah, electric. Yeah, because, I mean, your Spark, you'd give up some, uh, there's some luggage space missing out of that, uh, isn't it? it for... The cargo space is definitely smaller. <laughs> And it's huge normally, right? right. I mean, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's smart. Right, right. I mean, yeah, big box store right. kind of stuff. Yeah, that's you know? right. You know, you rent it instead of, it's a moving van, basically. <laughs> yeah, That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, it's not quite as crazily innovative as a Tesla in that there isn't a frunk. You know, they put all the electrical components up front. But still, you get a lot of benefits by putting that battery in the bottom. You have basically flat door sills. Uh, you sit at a very SUV, small SUV-like height in, inside. You know, it does make for, there's a good-sized cargo area in the Bolt. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't shortchange the innovation here. And I would like to separate the wow, sexy factor of Tesla and what this thing offers. So, Well, that's so, hard to do. <clears throat> well, we're going to do it right now. All right. So buckle yourself in. I mean, this car makes do with that 200 plus range with a 60 kilowatt hour battery. The most efficient Tesla with a 60 kilowatt hour battery, you know, same size as the Bolt, that's only good for 218. So GM's getting another 20 miles out of same battery capacity. So, so this is a vehicle that is able to do that. It's a much smaller package than we've seen with the Tesla. I mean, look, the Tesla Model S, it looks cool. It is big. Mm -hmm. I mean, whale. getting this into a garage <laughs> is kind of, you know, uh, a yeah, yeah. little, little rough. But it is, it is a very functional vehicle. I mean, it is easy. It is effortless to drive. Um, I, the one problem with the car, and I think we've talked about this before, look at it. Oh, don't make me. It, 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 it's don't. almost the frustrating part about it is that you look at the Model 3, which is, Right now, it's a little bit of vaporware because it's not here yet. Right. You're right. You're buying a promise. Mm -hmm. This is here. There isn't the excitement of the vehicle here. And the big difference is, I mean, it's like when this was designed, it seems like we talk about like form and function, right? We talk about, you know, the stylist mm -hmm. versus the engineers. This is like the classic, you know, battle in car design. It's yin versus yang. And, yeah. and, and this is like a car where I feel like the engineers all won. Mm -hmm. They got everything they wanted. They got the visibility. They got the seat comfort. The rear seat is huge in this thing. And they didn't compromise for style, mm -hmm. and it shows. Yeah, no, and, I'm, <laughs> and there's something about this that really <clears throat> hurts me because I'm an engineer. We work here at Consumer Reports. We are all for practical cars, but I think a lot of people are going to overlook this car because it is so painfully boring and dorky. Quirky. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle is so Quirky. much nicer than we are. <laughs> yes. I just, I just want to, I just want to say that right now. Yes, yes. Thank you for adding a bit of civility to, <laughs> to us uncouth heathens. But, yeah, but it, it, I, I just think it's, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's, there's not three hundred thousand plus people lining up to go out and buy a Chevy. And Bolt. maybe that's too bad. And maybe it's too bad that we, I mean, I, look, Model X. Let's let's talk about Tesla Model X. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they have gone so. That is the antithesis of this car. It is. It's like look all this whiz bang stuff, and we got Falcon wing doors, and we got this crazy windshield that doesn't work, and it's got the sun. I right. mean, it's we, we have we have an SUV <clears throat> that has no functionality. That, that has no functionality. You can't fold the back seats. I think the electric the spark has more room in the back yeah, of it. Might actually, yeah. You can fold the seats in it. Can't yes. You? Oh, there you all go. All the way down. Can't do that with it. So, um, yeah, but in here they've just gone function and, and it's it's too bad so i mean i don't know if there's a little more stuff but i mean look it's an all new platform from general motors there's no reason why they can't put other bodies on top of this mm -hmm. we saw that even with with tesla with their limited resources they have multiple vehicles right the x sure. and the s are both on the same platform mm -hmm. what i hope is we're going to see different vehicles on top of this platform hopefully with some style maybe some luxury maybe some sportiness I mean, look, it is a fun car to drive. It's Let's a great, not car. Over, it's a, it's a great car to drive. It is it, very mm, fun. Mm -hmm. It's just effortless. It's tons of torque, quiet. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's going to be nothing insane or ludicrous about the way it accelerates, but well, it still but, but, has that electric 
it, it, instant. It's, it's not crazy, but exactly. It is. It feels extremely responsive. Well, the electric spark compared to a regular spark, well, no. it is a, a ludicrous. It just doesn't have the button. <laughs> <laughs> we actually said that the electric spark, if you had to buy a spark, <laughs> the electric spark was the nicest one of all of them because right. that electric motor got rid of so many of the car's sins. You know, the, the underpowered engine and, yep. uh, and nearly in the horrible CVT. Yeah, it just made it better. But I mean, if you can get past how the Bolt looks, you're right. This is a really, really mature, substantial feeling car. But, but to go back to your, your initial question, it's like, you need to get an electric car, you want to buy an electric car, but you can't afford Tesla. Well, let's, let's, let's think about for a second why you want to buy an electric car. And mm. what are the reasons? Well, maybe you, know, you don't want foreign oil, maybe you don't want to go to the gas station, maybe you want to save money. But one of the kind of underlying thing, which I Thank Tesla for proving this, is that electric cars can be fun and can be cool. Mm. And they proved that point. And some people knew that because you drive, I mean, even you drive the compliance cars. Wow, they're, they're responsive. They're actually very effortless to drive. Mm. But here's the thing, for car enthusiasts that you know, want big V8 engines and, and manual transmissions, and no, there's no manual no, transmissions in electric cars, no, no, no. these are fun cars to drive. I don't care if you are an autocrosser and you spend your weekends going around cones at a bargain lot, electric cars are awesome for that. Instant torque, instant power. Mm -hmm. They're actually a lot of fun to drive. The, the other thing I'm finding fun about them is uh, right now I've taken out our Chevy Volt with a V for the next couple of days because it turns out the improv studio in Hartford that I perform at. Is this a plug? <laughs> is, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Eight o'clock, Sunday night. That's right. Night. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, parking in downtown Hartford is horrible, but there's a row of electric charging spots. There is that. So it's like oftentimes you can get preferential parking you know, with these spots. <clears throat> so it's become a game that within the 50 miles of the Volt's range, how much can I stay on electric? Where can I find parking spots? You know, where can I find places to charge? It's kind of, it's like geocaching. You know, it's kind of a fun exercise. That sounds great. <laughs> You don't seem convinced. Uh, one needs a hobby. <laughs> you don't. It's what we right. have. I need some good addition to improv. <laughs> But I mean, look, I mean, there are certain carrots mm -hmm. that communities put up for electric cars, right? I mean, you probably I had got the stickers. These. I actually never put the stickers on my car for HOV lanes. The, 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 the in stickers, California. okay, so explain what that means. Right, so in California, they give out a certain number of stickers that means I could have driven in a high occupancy vehicle lane where normally I'd have to be carpooling, but I could drive by myself. And traffic is horrible in California. Right, I California. lived off the 405 oh, freeway. Oh, okay. The 405. The 405. Infamous. 405. So that is a big draw right. to owning an electric car. But yeah. I would say that we are getting into this brave new world where other vehicles, you don't need the carrots anymore. We've got vehicles that on their own, and I, and I think there's something around that 200 mile mark. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Tesla has proven that. Right. Um, but with this vehicle too, I mean, if they made some style in there. But, <laughs> but it's like, you don't need the carrots. You almost don't even need the, in, the incentives to say, oh, you could park in this special spot but by the improv class, or you could go in the 405 in the HOV lane. That it's like, wow, this is actually just an enjoyable car to drive. Okay. And functional too. Okay, but um, let's talk about different kind of incentives, the financial ones. Um, the Bolt starts at around $37,000. Uh, you add in the $7,500 federal tax credit, that gets it to, I think, $29,995. It's a very intentional. Mm -hmm. With a caveat that you should consult your tax professional because yes. those <laughs> may vary according yes. to your own tax rates. Yes, they will vary to tax rates uh, state by state right. is different, uh, local municipalities. There's also, it's, it's very complex. Um, still, I'm looking at spending at least $30,000 Okay, less with taxes, but still, I'm looking at spending a substantial amount of money with a car that does have a limitation, a car that does take a while to charge, a car that, you mm -hmm. know, when 238 miles are done, I'm done unless I've found somewhere else to plug it in. Are, is, are people willing to put that money into it? Well, I guess they are, because they buy Teslas. Well, I, I think it's the point. They're, yeah. they're, they're plunking down $90,000, dollars uh, in cash for that. And I think in the case of Tesla, you know, whether or not there's a, $5,000 incentive or not, that's immaterial at that point. And I think, again, Tesla has proven that point. But I mean, much like Chevy Spark owners, how many people are buying those Teslas because it was so cool? Right, well, in, in the case of the Chevy Spark, they had incentives in certain states. I think it was Oregon, Washington, California at the well, time. The, those were the only places they sold it to, I thought. There were very few states. Yeah. Um, and 
I leased, so my option was actually, I didn't get the 7,500, I did get the state incentives, and my lease is $137 a month. And I don't have to do oil changes. <laughs> right. But I mean, yeah, you wind up with, what's fascinating about electric cars is there's so many kind of avenues and there's so many, there's so many ways to look at it. Uh, you have people who are leasing them for you know, very low amounts of money. You have people who a used, like a, a used Ford Focus electric or a used Leaf is eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. You know, that's for the person who fits that lifestyle. That's a, that's, that's a tremendous transportation value, assuming you can live within the confines of the range. Tesla has built a product where it's desirable. It's desirable whether it was electric or not. I'm wondering where this slots in. Well, and, and, that, and that's, the, that's the big question. Because as you mentioned, used, some of these compliance cars are going for peanuts. And the reason is that there isn't a demand for that. Mm -hmm. That's what really. Right. They had to give them away to begin with. So right. on the back and side. And there's still the infrastructure problems because it, it, no matter which charging system you're sure. putting into your I got offered a charging system. I can't remember what company it was that was partnering with Chevrolet at the time. But I didn't do it because the electricity in my garage was so outdated. It was going to cost <laughs> me about three grand oh, to install mm. the thing. Um, and so I had to go downtown to a parking garage where half the time the station, the bank of stations was broken. Mm -hmm. It was in a Walmart parking lot. Um, and it was about a 20 minute walk from home. Uh, and so I trickle charged. Really? Wow. <laughs> but I mean, likewise, I did that last night with the Volt. You know, I just, you know, just plugged it right. into 110. But you know, it's, it's also a little battery. Though. It's also something about, yeah, it's true. It's not a big battery. But also, I mean, I wonder the Volt is, I wonder how much you're giving up because you don't have access to those supercharger stations with the Bolt. You do have fast DC charging, which is not as popular. Most of them seem to be located at Nissan dealers. So, But, but, but just, go, just to go back to what is desirable and what is mm -hmm. not. And I think we've proven that these, for the most part, you know, these vehicles that have an 85 you know, mile range or whatever, the compliance cars, are not desirable in the broad market because of issues where the infrastructure is really important. If you could only go 85 yeah, well, miles. Yeah, you need infrastructure. With Tesla, Let's follow that through for a second. I mean, remember when the Volt, the Volt with the V came out? Mm -hmm. GM was out everywhere saying, well, it goes 40 miles on electric, and we've got studies that show most people go 40 miles, and nobody needs more than 40 miles a day, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's like, oh, by the way, threw an engine in there, too, just because we realized that yeah, you really, need to go further. Yeah, and it really only went 25-ish. So, yeah. I mean, the point is that 40 is not enough, 85 is not enough. I think with Tesla, they've proven that yeah, 200, wow, that really changes the whole... It really takes the fear away, because 85 is yeah. still an optimized 85. Sure. Yeah. Getting on to the 405, sure. say, and off and on again, and going, you know, as traffic speeds up with accidents ending and getting cleared away, that is what uses up all of your range, is mm -hmm. getting up to speed. Or here, uh, you you're know, right. when it's cold, or when you're right. running the heater, or... It's the unexpected. I mean, suddenly it's raining, and it's now my range goes down. Really, really, 85 is about 60 mm -hmm. if you're right, driving right. it like a normal car. So, so certainly, you know, I think that range. But is, is that enough to make this desirable without the Tesla cachet and the style and whatnot? Can yeah, it serve say. on its own as being? And and, and, and here's and, and not to be a you know <laughs> to be really sad about it, but we have seen very functional cars. Very oh, we, cars that yeah. make a lot of sense. Totally die in the marketplace. Totally die in the Mazda market. five, yes. Kia Rondo. Right. Um, so every station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, lots of minivans. Yes. So that's. I mean, to that end, if you can, issue. if you can get around the looks, which I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's just boring. You know, they tried. Jim tried hard. I mean, you know, the center touch screen. Is, is great. Well, I mean, just, just go down the list. I mean, this is a, again, the engineers won here. I mean, this thing got, it's got good visibility. It's got huge glass area. It is roomy. The rear seat is huge mm -hmm. in this thing. It's quiet. It's comfortable. It's responsive. Yes, the in-car electronics yeah. are next step. Yeah, CarPlay it, it, is very nicely implemented. It's the nicest CarPlay and even application I've seen. You look at the digital instrument cluster, and it's very it's artfully simple. done and, it's and simple. simple. Yeah, they didn't go go for they broke didn't. and try to put you know. Maybe. Yeah, there weren't leaves growing and butterflies <laughs> and trees it is, and. It is the functional functional car. It is a very smartly designed car, mm -hmm. other than stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, and the uh, automatic shifter. Uh, that's the one carryover product from other GM cars. <laughs> that shifter is almost a deal killer for me. <laughs> but it's the same shifter that's in what, uh, the XD5. The Cadillac XD5 Buick LaCrosse. Yeah, yeah. It's their monostable shifter. If you don't get the release just right, you're not going to get reverse. Right. And then the problem I had, as I was telling Tom, in the Spark EV, you just flip it into low. Um, you know, when you're coming up to a stop sign or coming onto traffic. To grab some more of that regenerative braking. Right, and it starts building up more power. I didn't realize with this shifter that it would not go back into drive when I pushed it forward. And it just pulled me to a stop. And I ended up having, you have to push it twice to throw it back into neutral and then pull it back again to go back into drive. Mm. And <laughs> Intuitive. So yeah, that's the easy. learning curve on Isn't that shifter we've now found is steeper so, than we so, thought. So the one piece that they took, inherited from the other <laughs> products, they didn't redesign, that they stumble with. But right. all the new stuff's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, overall, this is a, it's a very impressive car. Yeah. I do wonder, um, will it outsell the Volt with a V? We shall see. Yeah, because I mean, the Volt with a V is uh, the one we, are when we tested about $36,000, about mm -hmm. the same amount of money. There's different incentives, so, uh, you know, that will, the Volt will probably be a little bit more expensive than the Bolt because of different incentives. Um, smaller battery pack, uh, that 50 miles of range plus an engine versus 200 miles of range. Um, I know you've, well, been, you've been critical in the past of the Volt because it's basically two, you have basically two complete cars. Right. And well, and, and, I, and I think the, I mean, the latest reliability data kind of um, proves my point mm -hmm. that the beauty of an electric car is its simplicity. Okay, you don't have a transmission, you know, you just have one gear, you don't have a lot of things to go wrong. Right. Now you've taken the Volt and you've got a electric car and then you've also got an engine, you also got the transmission, and as we say, the reliability of the Volt is not good because the engine has right. problems. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what, if you're making uh, an electric car, don't put an engine right. in and uh, you won't uh, have problems with it. Yeah, the reliability of the redesign, the old one was all right. The redesign right. Of, yeah. of, of the redesigned car because you have so much, so mm -hmm. much complexity. Right. Keep it simple and that's the beauty of the electric car. The other thing I'm finding is, you know what, this goes back to the style discussion. Uh, the Bolt is a more pleasant car to be in than the Volt. The Volt is a more stylish car but you can't see out of it. The rear seats. The rear seats. Terrible. Yeah, they we added could say it. this is the Chevy you can see out of. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It <laughs> certainly isn't a Camaro. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I fit in this a lot better than a Volt. Um, so in many ways, it's a, it's a more welcoming car. Yep. Yeah, just very practical. It is. Mm -hmm. On the repair front, I will tell you this. I get emails occasionally still from the dealership or from the GM MyLink system that um, will tell me it's time for an oil change oh, or no. all sorts of <laughs> dealer service kind of announcements oh, that, that, that don't apply to my car. Yeah, let's hope they sort that out yeah. for the Bolt. Otherwise, yeah. it seems to be a very well sorted out, very But there is car. an app and I can see when my car is charging, when it's finished charging and it'll alert me if I parked the car downtown that my car is finished and it's time for me to go back and get it. Yep, so it, it doesn't park itself. <laughs> no. I can't call it over. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes simpler is, is just fine. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of Talking Cars. As always, we thank you for listening. We'll see you again next time.